in your life, like one definitely a very important one is Trinata piece on it, Trinata piece. Any devotee who doesn't put that on on the list. Mm. Another one very important is Vancha Kalpati Rupas Chakri was in the Veva Chapati Dalpavandu Vaishnava. But then there may be some special slokas which you really, which hit you. Which <coughs> maybe you memorized them, maybe you didn't memorize them, but you have them in your register as a very important example how the Vedic teachings are giving us substance and solace. I, I think above all, question of solace because uh, the solace is like for our life very important and let's sing I'll, I'll tell you some shlokas which we I mean yai dang paramangu yamad bhakti shabhi dasati this is my my favorite favorite shloka because it says Krishna says who is the dearest of all to me it says the dearest of the dearest is the one who tells others about this? Who tells others about uh, this this transcendental teaching of Bhagavad Gita? You know, so Krishna's giving the push on the on the preacher. Hey, you got to preach. I mean, preaching is a is a is a word. Share. Let's call it share. You got to share this nectar. You got to share this information. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't forget it. Share this information. This is what Krishna says. Nobody will ever be more dear to me than somebody who shares this. So this is, I mean, what more? How much trust Krishna puts in us when he says that, you know? I mean, He's saying that to everybody. Of course he does say to the devotees, no? Says anybody who shares this amongst the devotees, he, what is today, 21, no? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <coughs> anybody who shares this amongst the devotees. Now the devotees, they're more merciful than Krishna, they're shared with anybody and make them devotees. In other words, you may be a devotee, you may not be a devotee, but I'm risking myself. I'm telling you about the Bhagavad Gita. I'm telling you, please, come to the Bhagavad Gita, come to the, the words of Krishna. Listen to my Lord's and Master's sweet words of invitation to his world. Come, come. And then the person may say, yes, I'm interested. Another person say, I am not interested. This is not for me or anything like that. So <coughs> this type of uh, circumstances will arise. And of course, like for example, the ninth offense against the chanting of the holy name is to disturb others with the philosophy. So you should not preach to the faceless, it says. Should not. So. In other words, if people feel, hey, don't bother me, I don't want to hear about it, you know, please leave me alone, I have other things to do, then we shouldn't go, oh, you're a demon, oh, you must hear. No, this is not, this is not right. The Krishna conscience is a gift for those who are anxious to get that gift. So in this way, but the pre, the, the sharing must go on without the sharing. So for me, this is like one of the shlokas which, bah, it hits me in my heart. I have to share this. I have to do this. This is my life, my soul, my joy, my happiness, my everything. So next thing. What, what, one, Ishvara Parama Krishna Sachit Ananda Vikraha. And one shloka which also I love very much, even though Om Tat Vishnu Padamam Padam Pasyanti Yes, this, this shloka. Another one. Om Tat Vishnu Paramam Param Param. Yes, nice, nice. So, 
So this is so important. The, 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 the eyes of the Lord are always hidden behind the screen. He's always observing what you're doing. There he is in the form of Surya Dev. <coughs> so this is, listen, so like this, there are shlokas which hit you in your life. They really, it's so nice how you organize the class while the class is going on. I love that, you know. Especially when you come after half the class is finished. And then, This is really the oh, today's Kopashtami, very very important day. Today we have Radha Sham Shunda, a special outfit. Actually, one of the things in Gopashtami happened that Krishna he wanted to, to he wanted to see Radharani so badly. He said to Subal, Subal, I cannot live without Radharani. Can you, can you bring her here so I can meet with her right now? And Subal says, how would that be possible? This is, Im this is almost impossible. I mean, she's right now in the house with her mother-in-law. How can you expect me to bring her here? It's, it's not possible. And then Krishna says, you ask Sridham to, to bring her. Sridham is is also a confident of Krishna, uh, Priyanama Shaka, Shaka, and he uh, he looks a little bit like Radharani because he's the brother. So, uh, let's see if I get the story right. So, then, uh, he goes into the house, <coughs> Let's see. He goes into the house, he meets Radharani and says, Radharani, Krishna wants to see you. He cannot live without you another moment. You have to go, you have to go. Radharani said, but, but how will I go? I, I, uh, I, this will not be possible to go out of the house unnoticed. And so then they decide to change the dress that she will dress up like Shrida and and that she will carry a calf in front of her chest so so she'll be looking like a coward boy carrying a calf so in this way Radharani is going out of the house with a calf in her and looking like 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 her brother so this is this is the way how it was designed and how it was executed and then <coughs> when when she came uh, when she came to Krishna she said mm, I couldn't get her I couldn't get her to come it's not possible and Krishna fainted and then she said hey you couldn't recognize me what about your love you know and Krishna was fooled also first moment by the uh, by the change of attire with Sridham. And you know, this is one. So on this day, in Radhasham Shunda, they have Radharani carrying a calf and she, you can see her lotus feet. This is the pe peculiar thing. <coughs> Otherwise, Radharani's lotus feet are never visible. They're all, always covered by her dress. Did you find the guitar? Yeah. Where was it? In Ganesh room. <coughs> Ganesh took it yesterday from the temple. I saw the guitar in the temple yesterday. And I was uh, practicing and now I put it in the, in the room. Somebody <coughs> took it from my room. Yeah. It's not in your room. room. Huh? I put it in Did your you room. take it out from my room? No. From the temple. It was in the temple. It's not somebody can use it when they guarantee that it'll also come back. In the temple was, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> History gone, but. 
and plus they take it out why does it have a box for protection take it out with the box of protection and put it back in the box of protection I buy a box of protection and they just throw the guitar on the ground it's not nice you know this is careless this is happens when people men handle things which they haven't paid for they didn't they don't care it's very very nasty this is one of the biggest that's why I only invest in the rocks because invest in anything else somebody comes and destroys I love my rocks and the bigger the rock the better <laughs> five, six, seven meters big. I know in 10,000 years they still be there. <laughs> well, don't be so sure because people come and just knock the rocks apart and sell them as small, small stones. I mean, not even the rocks are sure. In Kali Yuga, nothing is sure. Anyway, go pashtami, go pashtami, kijai. Go Rashtami, Shri Go Pashtami, Shri Go Shtam, Go Tashtami, Go Puja, Cow, Worship of the Cow, where we already did that beautiful worship in Govardhan Puja, in Go Grasdan. This is uh, giving, I guess, Gras, Grasdan. This is, well, what means Grasdan, uh, Arupa? Gosto means. Uh, Grasdan, Go Grasdan. Gosto, huh? in which place? We are Sebda, we are uh, the Goshala, is also Goshto. Means giving grass to the cow? Yes. So grass is grass, gash, grass. No, no, no. when, uh, when uh, Krishna brings every cow to the ground for uh, the food, <coughs> food, this is called Goshto. <coughs> Then there's a disappearance of Srila Gadada Das Goswami today. So we're going to see uh, Gadada's Danta Samaj today. Then there's Siddhananjaya Pandit and Srila Srinivas Acharya's disappearance day. So we're going to go <coughs> to the temple of Srinivas Acharya. In the morning, our Parikrama will go to Dira Samira, Gopal Guru Samadhi, and in the evening, in the evening, we do what we were supposed to do yesterday, tell the story of our, our Kartik experience because yesterday we didn't find that time. And it's very beautiful to, to see how Kartik affects you, especially if you make it an intense meditation. I have to admit personally, I am not so concentrated on the Kartik as I wish to, because I've, I just arrived back to India and the new mayor came into office and there's a, there's a few new possibilities of improving the circumstances and and um, so like this I have to then there's the situation of the dam being closed also and what is our service here what is the Vrinda Kunja service so with Chaitanya we we make a plan of also doing the gardens in Bangsivat. So there's so many things on my mind that I'm not so totally absorbed. Where's Chittahari? He went back to Delhi? Maybe no. So, all this. Jai Nitai Gouda Bemenanti Hari Harinam Sankirtan Yak Yaki Jai. Yugal Parikrama? Today? Today is Yugal Parikrama? I don't think so. Are you sure? Because they are back Parikrama goes this Gopashtami. 
गोपाल गोपाष्टमी इज योगा परिक्रमा सो योगा परिक्रम इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फिनोमिना पीपल वॉक अराउंड मथुरा एंड वृंदावन इट्स ओवर फोर्टी किलोमीटर्स डबल द गोवर्धन परिक्रमा एंड दे डूइंग इट पेयर फीट विथ स्माइल्स ऑन देर फेस वेन यू सी द पीपल गोइंग ऑन दिस दिस आई एम टोटली अमेज आई मीन आई कुड आई कुड वॉक फॉर फोर्टी किलोमीटर्स नंबर वन विदाउट शूज I end up like a crying baby somewhere on the side of the parikrama, you know. And they do it. I mean, it's very amazing. Now, if you go to the satellite picture, like you're going and you see from the air what it looks like, it actually Mathura Vindam is surrounded by a garland of people. It's, it's amazing things about what a phenomena of faith, no? Really, really a phenomena of faith, and thousands of people do it. is really it's something very very beautiful and your parikrama means you walk for purification <laughs> and this walking for purification should be embellished by uh by doing service to the vaishnavas by to doing service to the tirtha gurus those who show us the dham actually Prabhupad was not a very intense parikrama man he said parikramas were boring to him he said that uh, i mean in a joking way you know because he's such an activist he always wants to do things for krishna so just to walk around uh, but uh, prabhupad also said that the holy dham is okay for 3 days after three days if you don't have a personal service to do or some deep study or something it's very dangerous for our mind we need to go like audarya was telling me the other day i always feel i want to be back in rio preaching you know it's already so many days have passed you know and and i remember remember when i first came to india for braj mandal parikrama or for meeting prabhupad we we just came to india to meet prabhupad you know we didn't care what you know prabhupad wants to take us to delhi or wants to take us to hyderabad or wants to take us to calcutta we just want to be with prabhupad in prabhupad's program doesn't matter when where how that's that was all no and <coughs> so in this way very important realization to be made is that uh one has to be absorbed in service this is if you are not having a service which a you are supposed to do b you like it there has to be a certain liking even if you don't like it then you have to like to do it because you don't like it but you do it anyway this is something like that you know like who who is a cutting vegetable is such a lovely engagement or cleaning toilets you know or, or scrubbing pots I mean, this is not exactly the most delightful activity but when you do it because you understand this is your dharma when you do it because you accept it as something sacred has come to you in the form of this service <coughs> then it is so different then you accept it and you uh, and you feel it you feel a certain victory there's definitely a victory connected on doing something you don't like to do but you do it because it's part of the devotional service this is this is very clear no victory against maya oh i'm lazy i don't want to get up but i get up because my guru is waiting for me i have to go there whatever things like that so in this way if you if you do your service if you do your service even if it is unpleasant to a certain degree when you do it that way then then 
then Krishna is very pleased with you. And when Krishna is pleased with you, you get the mercy and then things become more auspicious. Everything in spiritual life depends on auspiciousness. And auspiciousness is granted by our intense, intense degree of devotional uh, prayer. Our intense degree. So, I will read you one uh, song which you will can relate to about this intense degree telling you this information at an age so immature you were cheated by a cheater the result was you sold your own freedom the whole sampradaya is flawed you must purify your soul thinking this so careful you have become not wearing tilak or neck beads the burning of diksha you leave to invent your own new rules and systems looking up ancient opinions broadcasting your own concoction thinking you must be an incarnation proper vows you do not care for you throw old ways in the gutter the mahajans have mistaken vision Tilak, sacred thread and neck beads. Cheaters wear so cunningly. They are all the cause of your detachment. The Mahajan's path is faulty. By this vision you are angry. To follow their path, there's no attachment. Now just look, my dear brother. You have dropped gold to grab some ashes. Both the present and future are gone, calling cheat to everyone. When has pure devotion come? And after your death, what will happen? It's a very deep reflection of Bhakti Vinod Thakur on the time he was observing and how the forms or the, the external parts of the Vaishnavas, <coughs> they are such a wonderful thing, but there's also abuse to them. So, Mane Toda Boli Ivarata Apakabaya Sahaya Vanchita vanchakapaya bikaile nicha svatantrata sampradaya dosha budi jani tumi atma shudi karibari haile savadana nani leti laka mala tiaji la dikshara jwala nicha kaile navina bidana purva mate tali diya nicha mata pracharya Nietzsche avatara buti dari, vrata chara namanile, purva pata jale dile, mahajane brahma drishti kari, punta diksha maladari, durta kari se chaturi, tai tahi tomara vira, mahajana pate dosha, dekiya tomara rosa, pata prati chada anuraga. E kanate kahak bai swarna chadi lai la chai iha kala para kala jai kapatak bali la shave bakati papele kabe te hante vaki habe upai. So, last not least, everything we do will be judged at the moment of death. We reach the moment of death if we have not performed our duties correctly. <coughs> then there will be some reasons to lament. If we have neglected our duty, like we are all servants of Srila Prabhupada, 
But what does it mean exactly? What does Prabhupada want us to do? So, uh, we can only pray that we do the right thing by keeping in the association of those who are very dedicated to Krishna, selflessly dedicated. Only those who are selflessly dedicated and at the same time knowledgeable about the scriptures they can show us the appropriate way of behavior. It's not easy to do anything in this life, but by the mercy of Prabhupada, he has given us such an immense opportunity, such an immense uh, immense chance to get out of Maya. There's another song which Bhaktivinoda Thakur also wrote. He says, Soul, why like a fish you are falling for the nets of Maya again? Don't you know that when you get caught for a long time you will remain? Your longing for petty pleasures binds you up in Maya's strong net. There you stay with your changed nature, a captive in strict punishment. Now by the strength of devotion in the ocean of Krishna's love, play freely within those waters, staying under Lord Sri Krishna. Hare Kena Maya Jali Padi Techa Jiva Mina Nahi Jana Pada Haye Rabi tu mi chiradina, ati tu cha boga asse, bandi haye maya passe, rahi levi krita bavidandia, yata paradina, e kana bakati balle, Krishna prema sindu chale, krida kari anna yashe, taka tu mi Krishna dina. So we are falling in this world easily. Easily we run away from our spiritual master. Easily we are caught by the television. I mean, if you analyze television, for example, television and the movie industry, they are actually a very expert way of making people slaves. It is so amazing when you see how mind capturing are those moving little particles on the screen how one becomes attached to them how one becomes eager expecting something interesting in this way we lose our whole time so much valuable time now, if we produce some movie for Krishna or some documentary, it's a different story. We are actually taking a pin to take out another pin, like a splinter. We take a, like a thorn to take out a splinter. And sometimes in order to take out the splinter, you actually have to poke the thorn inside a little bit carefully to get out the splinter. So why are you putting in a thorn? Well, because the splinter bothers me. And by the thorn, I can take out the splinter. So this is something we should consider very carefully, that how we can actually uh, be careful about our spiritual life by uh, by utilizing, uh, by utilizing these these tools which are in this world, these mechanical tools, technical tools, but we have to be very careful. Sh Shri 
Śrīla Prabhupāda Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he gave the example, he says, you can try to catch the big fish, but don't get wet. Huh? So, I think we have a little discussion going on here. <coughs> Territorial discussion. In the, in the in the net of Maya, like the Maya, the television is so dangerous, you know. And devotees, I've spoken to devotees very often to be more careful about the television, but they think, oh, I'm so advanced, I will not be captured, I will not be in the illusion of this machine. But the illusion is so intensive. When you study how the television works how it is designed, what it is putting there, then you can clearly conclude, very clearly conclude, that this is meant to make you a first-class idiot. <coughs> now let's see. Do you watch television sometimes, Ganesh? <coughs> Never? Smart guy, huh? What about you, Subha? You watch sometimes? Indian television or Colombian television? Huh? Both. Mm -hmm. What about you, Damona? You watch television? Yes? You want to become a first-class idiot? Huh? Huh? No. What about you, Malati? Uh, no, if you watch them, it's in Krishna conscious, I'm not referring to no, that. I'm not saying Krishna I'm saying that can be Maya just as well. Yes. Huh? What about you, Tanakeli? You watch a lot of television. So you want to become a full class idiot? Do you agree that that's what television is designed for? <laughs> Serious issue. What about you, my dear? You watch television? <coughs> what about Prima? <coughs> you have not had a television in 10 years. And also you don't watch it in other houses? But in that week you watch a lot. Yes, it's a, it's really like it's magnet. It's, it sucks you in exactly. It's like yeah. it sucks you in. It's a it's a very powerful agency of making us idiots. You watch television? Yes. They say yes and do like this. <laughs> this is like in the same way they do in Bulgaria. In Bulgaria they say yes and they say no. <laughs> so one is used. So television, what about you Krishna Kirtan? You and the television. I don't have television in home but sometimes I'm looking at uh, news programs. So I need to work. For in news for work, some economical also. Use for work is another thing. What about you, Sri It happens. It happens, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is nice, such an honest swami, no? Interested <laughs> scientific things and, uh, and uh, geographic, natural, uh, 
uh, uh, natural uh, geographic things. I watch it. Uh, if I'm in Sweden. So. <coughs> Yes, it's different ways they suck us in. They know they're like the ghosts. The ghosts know some people want good things and they give them good things and suck them in. They know others they want to do bad to others, then they suck them in in this way. So in this way, for each character, they have a way to suck you in. What about you, brother? Never, you don't watch it. <laughs> <coughs> Chaitanya, you're watching television. You want to become a first class idiot? Huh? No, not India. I say you want to become a first class idiot. Huh? <coughs> this is very question. This is so serious, you know. The television is designed for making you a, an idiot, a slave, a dependent. It wants to tell you everything, what to wear, what to drink, what music to listen to, what movies to look at, everything. The television, like, like even, even they want to tell you what your belly and your breast is supposed to look like. Huh? Everything, you know, they are totally taking control of the gullible people. And and this is something which our spiritual master have taken, given us in, in very serious advice. Yes. Rudev, I would like to share that uh, I've watched television for 20 years every day of my life. And since I met the devils, I never... Press the button again anymore. Never. Yeah. Yeah, we know it and we cut it, but it's a dangerous thing. I would almost call it something like a TV addiction. Like in in Alcoholics Anonymous, you you know once an addict, always an addict. Even if you are not doing it at this moment. There's always an addiction tendency and one has to be very careful. I think we have to make the TV purga, purga for, uh, for the reader therapy. Uh, that, is, that is very, very important because uh, our acharyas, they have given us the information that if somebody has an ulterior motive and he starts talking to you, if you listen to him, you become influenced. You become influenced. We are vulnerable people. Yes, Arup? Yes, Guru Deva. TV is totally bad because if, if anybody looks the news channel, this, is, this channel also is commercial channel. For our money, they are open this channel. And they are, don't show the original news because I am, uh, before I am a crime reporter, I know this situation. So TV is totally bogus. Any news channel, any any channel. They are, they are commercial channel. Yes. And they are so not original news. Every time they are so... Full of lies. Yes. Full of lies just to sell you items. That's... So therefore, any intelligent person, same as newspaper, yes, you're right. A newspaper and this is is a big drug. I listen only government news service. The India, India government, Akashvani, all India radio, I listen to them. They lie the best. <laughs> <laughs> they must because, expect. Because the Indian, all India radio is government, totally under India government. But they lie because they have ulterior interests. One of the things which has, uh, one of the things which is very important, which is a, a great obstacle in one's spiritual life, it is called patriotism. Patriotism is identical with 
I am this body, I am this body. Then Prabhupada comes and come says, You are not this body, you are not this body. What? What? What is he saying? I am this body, I'm from Peru, I'm from Poland, I'm from Germany, I'm from Russia, I'm from Whatever. Hungary, like this. Everybody, patriotism is the perfect way of fooling people. First of all, you say, hey, you, are, you have to be patriotic for your country. And the next thing they say, hey, somebody is attacking our country. Let's go and kill those guys. <laughs> huh? Come on, let's go and kill them. Here, you take the knife, you take the gun, you take the club, you take the poison, you do. Now let's go and get these guys. Yeah, yeah, okay, Mr. General. And if you don't do it, we kill you. What a nasty thing is this stupid patriotism. I mean, there is a definite naturally defense of one's physical needs. But the physical needs have always been defended by our spiritual teachers in the form of Mother Nature, in the form of, of our tradition, our fathers, our teachers, everything. We have always been defended because it's the nature of those who, who have power to, or to, those who have responsibility to protect those who are under their care. So patriotism, now patriotism is also there in a, Actually, I don't know the etymological origin of the name Patrio. Patrio. Fatherland. This means uh, mother's, your, where you were born, your yeah, yeah. Uh, mother's place. Yeah. Yeah, it's from Pat father, father, father. Father. Fatherland, yeah, it's probably. So, so patriotism. Uh, uh, can be applied to Mother Earth, no? Why should it be applied only to one region and to one clan? Because then it becomes immediately a cause of problem for the others. So, practically, in order to put the people one against each other, the politicians and the people, they have used patriotism. And you know, we, we, we went to two world wars. This planet went to two world wars, people killing each other by the millions. By the millions, you know. <coughs> by the millions they killed, they were killed in this in this first world war, then the second world war. And the wars have not stopped. Again and again there's this war and that war and uh, unfortunate things, you know, everywhere. So-called, you create, you create a, a, an enemy picture and then you get the people fired up to do something, to, to vent their aggressions, to vent their frustrations against this enemy picture. So this is something, you know, those people who, like for example, in the time of Hitler or Mussolini, what did they do? They made armies of the frustrated people who had no money. So it's very easy. They have no money. They are frustrated. Now let let let's get them into some violence against others. So it's it's very uh, it's a pattern. You could say the whole world of illusion is very much of a pattern, and uh, patriotism or racial hate racial hate or the hate against another religious minority this is all these things they come in so handy 
like you know what they did uh, with the with the Jewish people. There was a there was a history, a time in history, where the Jewish they had some money, and the 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 people in Europe they thought well we can just declare them enemies of the state or maybe witches or something so that's what practically the the holy inquisition was nothing more but a program to steal from the rich but from the rich jews so whenever somebody was accused to be an enemy or to be something then they had the right to confiscate all his goods all his all his properties so <laughs> there was a good, uh, there was a uh, good excuse for stealing people's property. So in this way, we can find out that in this world, all the relationship or the negative relationships between one and the other is really uh, concocted on wrong ideas, and patriotism is the wrong idea. We are all brothers and sisters, that's the right idea. And uh, to give unnecessary pain to others means pain is coming back to me. If anybody of those people who give trouble to others, like the, the soldiers and all these people, if any one of them would really realize that all the trouble I'm giving here to others, it's going to come back on me just equally, you know? then. Who would do it? Honestly speaking, who would who would do a criminal activity if he knows for sure that this is going to be uh, happening to him? Just the exact way he's perpetrating the privacy and the security of another person. Hmm? No, there would be no criminals if they believe in karma. There would be no wars if people understand that this is just what's happening. Like, would you kill a mother's son in front of her eyes, knowing that you will be killed in the front of your mother's eyes? Impossible. So therefore, the, the saying was, don't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. That should be a, a basic understanding. Don't do to others what you don't want them to you do to you. So there are values, there are messages, but we are influenced. So therefore, I say it again, watching television makes you an idiot. It makes you somebody who's like depending on this media for information which is wrong, enjoyment which is wrong, values which are wrong everything which you get from television is wrong just like who's right the VJP is right or Congress is right or the communists are right none of them are right but they do some things which are necessary because every government does many things which are necessary so but those who are in the political parties they just want their benefit from this political party from the power they're holding and that's it and many of their concepts are completely wrong. Many. And then if the government is dictatorship, then they want to impose on everybody, just like in the case of the fascists. My goodness, you know, they imposed on the people to, to even think of them all day. Like, say, salutation in the name of a political leader, no? What they say? Hail the king. Huh? That was the British saying, long live the queen, uh, saying like that. Imagine a poor Indian guy who had nothing to do with a stupid woman from England, an absolute stupid exploiter and invader of India. But uh, they would say, God save the queen. They had to do that while the British were in charge, no? That was the official, no? And then Hitler, he copied the same thing, he says. Everybody has to say, Heil Hitler! Huh? Which means the same. Heil means, be he safe, be he... It's, it's like the, the same idea as God save the Queen. Hmm? 
So everybody wants to put, impose himself on others like this. It's a very, very strange world, you know. And if we don't learn our lesson, well, then we're going to stay in this world of illusion. We're just going to stay here. It's just going to continue. <coughs> whole world is going to continue in illusion. Therefore, if you want to know what's right, what's wrong, you have to go to your heart. And you have to go, Guru, Shastra, Sadhu, Vakya, Chitite, Koriya, Aikya. We believe in the religion of truth. Tattva means truth. Tattva Vivek is somebody who knows the truth. If you don't know the truth, then just shut up. If you say, but I think we should, I think we could, I would like to things to be like this, shut up. Go in the, go in the desert and talk to the sand. Huh? We don't need to listen to all your mental vomit. We have no time for it. But the dictator, he says, you have to listen to my mental vomit. I'm going to pour it into your ears every day. Whether you like it or not, you're going to get it from both ears. And if you don't take my mental vomit, then you get my stick. So this is what dictatorship is all about. And there is tyranny in the realm of thought. Tyranny, it's a tyrant is a dictator, no? So <clears throat> when you're deprived of the true information and you're just misguided and you're, you're, you're being, the wrong information is imposed upon you, that is called tyranny in the realm of thought. So this is, this is the danger of this material world. <laughs> this is the constant danger, the great difficulty. So therefore, our scriptures say, Guru Shastra Sadhu Vakya Chitete Koriya Aikya. Start your day chanting the names of the Lord and pray. Please be with me. Please guide me. Please show me the right way. I want to do the right thing. I only have a few days, months, years in my life. I want to do the right thing. And whatever is my dharma, this I will have to do. And my dharma is to become God conscious. My dharma is not to eat, sleep, mate and defend. That's not my dharma. My dharma is to do what Krishna wants. Yudhisthira. Yudhisthira, he is also called Dharma Raj. But at one point, because he doubted what Krishna was telling him, he fell down. You know that story? It's a very precise story. It shows the real, the real value scale. There was... Uh, Yudhisthira, there was the battle of Kurukshetra was going on and and in order to defeat Drona, Dronachai was very powerful, he was the Ashtra Guru of the Pandavas. Uh, so the, the only way to defeat him was if he was not paying attention. So therefore Krishna said to Yudhisthira, say Ashwatthama, Ashwatthama was killed. And then Ashwatthama was not killed. But Krishna said, if Drona hears that from your mouth, knowing that you will never lie, then he will be depressed and Arjuna can kill him. That's in the middle of the Kurukshet. And Yudhisthira doubted. How can I speak a lie? How can I speak a lie? And as soon as he doubted, his chariot touched the ground. 
because he never, it's said, his chariot, he was so above everything, he was such a pure king. But when he doubted in Krishna's word one moment, then his chariot touched the ground. That's what the Mahabharata said. So then what happened? Then they killed an anim, an elephant, which was also called Ashwatthama. And then Yudhisthira finally agreed, okay, I have to do what Krishna says. So he said, Ashwatthama has died. <laughs> <laughs> Poor elephant, no? Well, whoever died in front of Krishna, he went back to his spiritual world, so I guess it's okay. But then Dronacharya was killed by Arjuna because he, he dropped his weapons when he heard that his son had died. But his son didn't die. As a matter of fact, he did so much evil after the Kurukshetra war. Anyhow, this is the war. This is the description of the Mahabharata, which is there to teach us many lessons, to teach us what's right. So, to have a doubt about Krishna's instruction, even if he tells you to lie, this is the top and the highest. <clears throat> so can you understand the scale of values here? The God's sweet will is above everything. God's sweet will is our life and our soul. We have to find out what is God's sweet will. Guru Shasta Sadhu Vakya and Chiti Te Goriya Aikya and your heart. You have to also ask your heart what's right here what's wrong what the guru says what the scriptures say what the sadhu say and what's my heart say and then after you have counseled with all these then act upon it because if you don't act upon guru shastra and sadhu then you have no reason or no right to complain later like bhaktivinoda thakur says what will happen to you after you die when you get the reaction, when you get the reaction for everything you did so far. <laughs> this is our meditation on these songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, praying for him to keep us aloof. And today on the Gopashtami day, the Leela day of Krishna and Balaram playing in the forest of Braj, we are going to go to one very special temple this morning called Dira Samira. And Dira Samira is a, is a place where <coughs> Gauri Das Pandit was coming when he came to Vrindavan. Dira Samira is the place where the cold winds from the Himalayas come down and they pass through the Sari of Radharani and give a refreshing breeze to Krishna. And Krishna feels so fortunate that his body is being touched by that wind which went through the Sari of Radharani. <laughs> this is the uh, the sweetness of divine love is also there described in this. So, I pray for all of you that this Kupashtami day may be a very intense day. Now let us read our verse of the Bhagavatam today to complete our morning studies. Vishakshano Siarhati Viritum Vibur Anantaparasya Nivritita Shukam Pravartamanasya Gunairanatmanas Tatu Bhavan Darshaya Cheshtitam Vibu. The Supreme Lord is unlimited. 
only a very expert personality, retired from the activities of material happiness, deserves to understand this knowledge of spiritual values. Therefore, those who are not so well situated due to material attachment should be shown the ways of transcendental realization by your goodness through description of the transcendental activities of the Supreme Lord. Wow, this is Narada Muni's instruction of Srila Vyasadeva. I mean, it's the same thing. Yaidang Paramang Buyam. It's the same message. <laughs> share, 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 share. Give to others everything which you have received. Theological science is a difficult subject, especially when it deals with the transcendental nature of God. It is not a subject matter to be understood by persons who are too much attached to material activities. Only the very expert who have almost retired from materialistic activities by culture or spiritual knowledge can be admitted to the study of this great science. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly stated that out of many hundreds and thousands of men, only one person deserves to enter into transcendental realization. And out of many thousands of such transcendently realized persons, only a few can understand the theological science, specifically dealing with God as a person. Sri Vyasadeva is therefore advised by Narada to describe the science of God directly by relating his transcendental activities. Vyasadeva is himself a personality expert in this science and he is unattached to material enjoyment. Therefore, he is the right person to describe it. And Shukadeva Goswami, the son of Vyasadeva, is the right person to receive it. Srimad Bhagavatam is the topmost theological science science and therefore it can react on the layman as medical doses <coughs> because it contains the transcendental activities of the Lord there's no difference between the Lord and the literature the literature is the factual literary incarnation of the Lord so the layman can hear the narration of the activities of the Lord Lord thereby they are able to associate with the Lord and thus gradually become purified from material diseases. The expert devotees also can discover novel ways and means to convert the non-devotees in terms of particular time and circumstance. Devotional service is dynamic activity and the expert devotees can find out competent means to inject it into the dull brains of the materialistic population. <laughs> Such transcendental activities of the devotees for the service of the Lord can bring a new order of life to the foolish society <laughs> of materialistic men. Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his subsequent followers exhibited expert dexterity in this connection. By following the same mod method, one can bring the materialistic man of this age of quarrel in, into order for peaceful life and transcendental realization. Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Vindavan Sri Govinda Gopinata Madana Mohan one who has forsaken all, oh, this is Canto 1, Chapter 5, text number 16, and that follows is 17. One who has forsaken his material occupations to engage in the devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage. Yet there is no danger of his being unsuccessful. On the other hand, a non-devotee, though fully engaged in occupational duties, does not gain anything. <coughs> Well, this is a, like a shloka which gives you some hope. Who, even if I slipped, even if I made a mistake, I can get up again. I will go my way. Let's be a devotee. Let's worship Krishna under every condition. Let's not give up. But at the same time, don't expect high realizations as long as you're slipping, as long as you're doing foolish things. And don't expect that you will not be uh, called upon to be responsible for what you did. 
So Shima Bhagavatam Narada's instruction, wow, it's it's just amazing. I every day I open the Bhagavatam, every day I read in the Bhagavatam, my love commitment with the Bhagavatam increases. Every time I'm I'm very, very you know, actually one should read it all day, but there's so many other things to do in this world. But the Bhagavatam is such a nectar. And especially I'm fond of the first canto, even though, of course, the tenth canto is Krishna's Lila, Lila Skanda. But still, the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam is giving us such an incredible, such an incredible information about the theological sites. So I ask my dear Lord and Master to please help me to control my mind that I will not be deviated from what is the essence, from what is the truth, because otherwise <coughs> I recognize my total power of powerlessness before the material energy. When Maya wants to catch you, Maya can just drag you and embarrass you in public and chastise you. The Maya is, uh, Srila Harijan Maharaj used to say in his classes that he was given the example of the boxing matches. In the boxing match, there's two ways you can win a fight. One is by points, they give points, and the other one is by knockout. So we may be able to win a few points against Maya here and there. But if Maya wants, Maya just going to give one knockout on your nose and you're flat. That is, as it is, you're finished. So don't play with Maya. She's going to knock you out. And I'm saying that to myself and I'm saying that to anybody else who wants to hear it. Don't play with Maya. She's just going to knock you out. And then you're completely embarrassed and then you're completely uh, devoid of uh, of the beautiful things which Krishna has given to us in <coughs> devotional service. So don't go away from the devotees, matter what. Stay with the devotees, matter what. Think of Krishna, matter what. Never forget Krishna, matter what. That's why we came together here in this Braj Mandal Parikrama and now we can uh, take full advantage of it and continue our meditation on Sri Krishna and do our homework because the homework is there for you to become more intensely connected to the to the to the total execution of of an <coughs> of a purification and then of course we have the beautiful lilas to chant which we are not chanting because of the language pro problem but individually I recommend to you just pass once a day through the eight lila kirtans which Guru Deva Tulananda gave to us in poetry so at least this way you keep very intensely connected to uh, Vajjanan was given us he made the copies of that so if you find the time please just read them once a day and this is also uh, a way of the Niyama Seva I must say to recite them jointly in Sanskrit it's too lengthy and you can't understand it to recite it in Spanish it's also lengthy for those who don't speak Spanish so I think we're going to have a, a, a study period for that a study period where everybody can do this reading of these Lilas uh, at least for the last day so once again make sure you have your copy of these uh, uh, Jam Kirtans and uh, so we will end our Niyama Seva also with this uh, with the last days being quite absorbed in the because we're going up towards Ras Purnima and and as Ras Purnima is approaching and the disappearance day of Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj and so many other things as these things actually take place so we are we are we are very 
grateful that we can uh, be engaged in this in this service of Braj Mandala, and <coughs> of course, after that, when the Kartik finished, then our Braj Mandal Seva will intensify because. He, like I say before, if you don't do service in Braj, you're going to be lost. So this is this is a place for very very extreme, for very extreme circumstances. So uh, for extreme meditation, <coughs> I'm very thankful that you are all here together with us and. Uh, And I hope that if you have any question, you may ask now. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to prepare to go to these places today.